Mr. 300. Feels good. One of the most exciting things about going to a new place is seeing the animal species that adapt to living there. Oftentimes, these creatures are unique to the environment they inhabit and can't be found anywhere else. Derek and I ventured to the salt marshes along the Gulf of Mexico in hopes of finding a particular sparrow. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding and Derek and I are at the coastal salt marshes of southwestern Louisiana and this is a really unique habitat. There are a lot of birds here that I don't usually get to see, but the one that we are going for most is the seaside sparrow, which would be a lifer for me. The seaside sparrow can be found in coastal marshes along the Atlantic Ocean, and rarely ventures away from this area. With Derek having seen them before, he served as my guide to finding one of these interesting birds. So this is part of Sabin National Wildlife Refuge, I believe is what it's called. And this is the Blue Goose Trail. And what I really like about this area is it just feels so remote. Like, it's very quiet. Um, we got a couple willets flying in, which is nice to see right off the bat. You can hear them in the background. We're going to see if we can find a seaside sparrow. Um, that's awesome. Uh, we should hear them calling if they're here. So I know another spot we can try, but I've had them here in the past. So I just don't know if they're here right now. We started scanning the reeds for seaside sparrows. We quickly found several birds flying in and out of the grasses that turned out to be savanna sparrows. Also in the area we noticed a great egret as well as another fish catching bird common in the southern part of the state. A uh, neotropic cormorant up on one of these uh, sticks in the water. It's got the white outline on the gular, very cute angle. Um, most of what we'll see out here for cormorants is going to be the neotropic. I think we do get an occasional double crested out here. so. If you're looking for this, a specific one, it's good to check. We continued walking and came across a northern mockingbird as well as a merlin, but couldn't seem to find a seaside sparrow at this particular stretch of salt marsh. This was a really cool first salt marsh in Louisiana experience for me. Uh, a lot of these birds are ones I don't see very often, so I'm really excited about them, uh, even though we haven't found the seaside sparrow yet. But hopefully one of the other locations like this, we can find one. Next, we checked another access point just a few miles down the road, where we found many common gallinule that were actively feeding and giving fantastic views. Also in this area was a fairly large American alligator. After that, we left the salt marshes for a while to see some other western Louisiana hotspots with a focus on ocean birds and warblers, but we returned to the salt marshes later in the day to a location that people had recently reported seaside sparrows. We noted several species out on the water, including Forster's terns, laughing gulls, and brown pelicans, the state bird of Louisiana. We also found a reptile that is typically only found in salt marshes. Went into the salt marsh to get him. Yeah, I went into the marsh and found him for you. Yeah, look at that underside, wow. Salt marsh snake, non-venomous. They're nocturnal, so I'm surprised it was out during the day. Is that like your holy grail of snakes? No, but I've never seen one since so a brand new herb. After releasing the snake back into the marsh, we heard a distinctive buzzing call. I legit just heard and then saw a seaside sparrow while we were messing around in this ditch here. And uh, I want to go see if we can get it perching up. That would be amazing. We went over to the spot where the bird disappeared into the reeds and waited for it to call again or make itself visible, but it never did. Although I had technically seen a seaside sparrow, I wasn't satisfied with the experience, and it left me feeling like I had unfinished business with the species. A day later we were off to Grand Isle, one of the most southern points in Louisiana. On the way, we stopped at Elmer's Island, a known seaside sparrow hotspot. This is the road down to the Elmer's Island beach, and this is where we're going to listen for seaside sparrow. I've also seen spoonbills in here, and uh, reddish egrets can be found in here too. So. We're gonna slowly cruise down, listen. We began walking a gravel trail with fantastic sparrow habitat lining the path. We almost immediately noticed a few sparrows moving in the tall grasses. They turned out to be Nelson sparrows. These birds mark the 300th Louisiana species for Derek, an awesome achievement.
Mr. 300. Feels good. That one, that, that's been such a tough Louisiana bird for me. The Nelson Sparrow is a bright looking sparrow species with orange on their face, chest, and wings. They have a gray back, cheeks, and head stripe. Nelson sparrows can be found along the southern Atlantic and Gulf coasts of the U.S. in winter, and then migrate through the center of the country and along the Atlantic to their breeding areas in the Midwest and Canada. Even if they are around, Nelson sparrows can be difficult to see because they tend to reside in thick vegetation and stay low to the ground. This species feeds primarily on insects during breeding season, but they also eat plant matter such as wild rice. In winter, much of their diet consists of seeds. That's a great find. Normally those are a lot harder to find than the seaside sparrows. <laughs> so hopefully well, we let's find the seaside one. sparrow. They're in here somewhere. So let's see if we can get one. Got a Nelson sparrow, which is really cool. That's an awesome bird to find, but the seasides are still not making themselves visible. And I don't think I've heard a call for them here yet, but other people have had them here, so hopefully they're around. We pressed on intermittently seeing birds fly up for a second, only to disappear out of view. Even though the seaside sparrows remained elusive, we still had plenty of other things to look at, including snowy egrets, sedge wrens, and many fiddler crabs. Tiny crab. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Catch of the day. Catch of the day. We decided to head to Grand Isle and check back later to see if a different time of day would yield better results. Seaside sparrows have been tricky. Um, we'll see if we can get one later in the day, but there's a lot of cool stuff to check out at Grand Isle and a lot more habitats to explore. After a few hours of fun on Grand Isle, we returned to the tall grasses of Elmer's Island. This time, we finally got eyes on a seaside sparrow momentarily sitting up. Right there. It was a very short encounter, but still, it was an opportunity to actually be able to see one perched. I'm so excited and also kind of relieved that we found that bird. That was like one of the top birds I wanted to see and they just were not sitting up at all. It finally perched up for a second. Actually, I saw it fly and it was just darker than everything else and, uh, and that's how we got it. The seaside sparrow is a sparrow with a very large bill. Overall gray color, buffy flanks, streaked underside, and yellow lures. They can be found almost exclusively along the United States coasts of the Atlantic Ocean. Seaside sparrows primarily live in brackish marshes, but some subspecies live in freshwater marshes as well. This species feeds on seeds, insects, and other small invertebrates. Seaside sparrows can most easily be located in springtime when males sing and display to attract females. <laughs> it was a relief to finally get a visual on a perching seaside sparrow. For a species that many regard to be a relatively easy find in the right habitat, this bird proved to be incredibly frustrating. That being said, there really is something special about the species that only live in a particular habitat, and the seaside sparrow is one that certainly falls into that category. While I still feel that I have some unfinished business with this skulky bird, I was happy to at least get to see one in such a unique and beautiful habitat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Mm -hmm.